What is going on everybody, Shwayze here, and in today's video, we're gonna be discussing seven things that I love and five things that could be a little bit better on the 2023 Land Rover Defender 130. All right, we're gonna start this list with the things that I love about this vehicle. And the first item of the list is really at the top of the list, and that has to do with the styling of the Defender. I really love how the styling looks. I mean, it's got a good mix of retro and modern, and just some really cool touches all throughout. I mean, this definitely looks different than every other crossover on the market. It reminds me a lot of how the Bronco paid homage to its previous generations. So does this Land Rover Defender. You've got a mix of old, with new and I think you know this is instantly recognizable as a very striking and good looking vehicle even though maybe the styling's not for everybody it's definitely different and that's why I like it it's not the same as what you would find in any other three row crossover and I think that they did a fantastic job with it I think that's also the reason why this thing sells so well I mean everything from just the Defender badges over here at the fenders you've got this fake aluminum trim over here at the top that's reminiscent of the previous generations, the LED headlights that are round and classic Land Rover. You've got the Defender badge over here in like a 3D badging. And then you've got this kind of cool looking aluminum plate down here at the bottom for your front bumper where your LED fog lights are located. I mean, just a really, really striking vehicle. The mix with the white and the black over here on the side also looks really good. You know, the story is no different on the interior. It's got that rugged with luxury taste to it. And you have the soft touch material over here. I do like like these Torx head screws that screw the panel into place. You have this exposed metal door, which is body painted color. So, you know, whatever color you have on the outside, this will be the same color. I think that looks awesome. Uh, you also have some nice touches over here, the nice Meridian sound system. Then coming over to the seats, you know, this is the light oyster color and it just looks really good, very light and airy on the inside. Uh, and then jumping inside, styling here is also very unique and different. So turning on this vehicle, let me show you the rugged steering wheel over here. Moving above the dash, you do have this rubberized soft touch material that's very rugged, but then you also have this nice leather that wraps around onto the passenger side giving it kind of that upscale luxury look. You've got Defender badge embossed into the dashboard. And then just the, you know, the way this center stack flows down, uh, very minimalist in design. It's a kind of typical Land Rover. You know, the interior design just has a lot of different textures and different materials. You've got this nice uh, white looking material over here, a rubberized texture in here. You've got some more wood veneer over here with some of those Torx head screws. So lots of different materials all throughout the cabin that just flow together into to one uniform piece and it looks really nice. Now for the second thing I love about this vehicle has to do with the software and the technology. First off, you have a 12.3 inch all digital instrument gauge cluster display that you can actually adjust to have a different layout. So it's pretty customizable. You can even have your map show up as the entire full screen and that's pretty cool, especially you know if you're taking it on a road trip, it's kind of nice to see that front and center. Uh, and then over here you have a large 11.4 inch curved touchscreen. So as you may be able to see, uh, this thing actually curves a little bit downwards towards the dash, kind of a unique style to it. And the software here is very, very snappy, very quick. Uh, you know, you pull up a button, it immediately opens up, there's no delay. And you know, the technology here is really advanced. Uh, so you have a 360 degree camera, which gives you a 3D view, but then if you hit the off-road mode and you start driving, it will show you what's going on underneath the vehicle, kind of really interesting interesting uh, what they can do with the software there. Uh, and then you have so many dozens of different angles that you can cycle through. I also like the four by four modes here where you can see exactly how high up the water is as you're taking this off road. And then this will adjust depending on what level of air suspension you're on. You've got so many different configurable drive modes. So by pushing this button over here, you can cycle through about eight different drive modes with six of them being mostly off-road configurable drive modes. And then I do like the way that these switches down here serve multiple purposes. So as you can see, I push this button and it comes back to my climate control and I push it and I can cycle through the rotary selections of the drive modes. And then at the same time, I can push this button and turn on the heated and ventilated seats. So, you know, the minimalist design carries over down here and makes it really easy to do. You know, on the right-hand side, you can control the ventilation and increase or decrease the fan speed. Uh, a little bit more on the software I want to touch on. Uh, you do have eco data where you can, uh, you know, see 
see what your energy impact is. So for example, right now my AC is taking up a little bit more of the energy than everything else. It can also give you tips on how to be most economical. I do like the fact that you can pull up your vehicle dimensions here and you know, depending on what ride height you're on, right now I'm on the lowest setting at six inches, I can raise this up and that way, you know, if I'm taking it off-roading, I know exactly how much ground clearance I have. That's a pretty useful feature. If I raise this vehicle up, it's gonna show me exactly what my approach, breakover, and departure angle is. So really nice tech right there. And then another feature I really like is the air quality feature, which will show off what the exterior air quality is and the interior quality. And yesterday, the exterior air quality was closer to the orange and the red, and the interior was still green, so it can purify the outside air. But what I like is you can set your destination air quality as well. So it takes a second to load, but let's say you're traveling you know, to Los Angeles and you wanna see what the air quality is there. Well, you can open up this menu and plug in your destination air quality, and then it'll tell you exactly what the five-day forecast is. So that's pretty cool functionality. And then on the left-hand side are your quick access buttons. So if you wanna quickly go to your navigation, you know, you just push that button. If you wanna quickly go to your audio, you push that button, and then your camera is always available on the right-hand side. So I love the technology here, just really advanced advanced and uh, same with the instrument gauge cluster. And of course you also have an all digital rear view mirror, which is nice because this does have three rows of seating. Now, the third thing I love about this car may sound a little silly, but it does make a difference when you're driving. And that has to do with the seating position. So as you can see, I'm sitting pretty high up in this vehicle. This is kind of common for a lot of off-roaders, very reminiscent of my Bronco, but you have a very commanding view of everything going on around you. So I have a very good view over the hood of this vehicle, as you may be able to see on camera. And then the greenhouse or the size of the windows are very large as well. So you have this amazing view of everything going on around you. Nothing feels like you're claustrophobic and it just gives you kind of a confident feeling behind the wheel of the Defender. And I really like that because it makes you feel like you're king of the road when you're driving behind the wheel of the Defender. Now for the fourth thing I love about the Defender 130 has to do with the second and third row seating. So starting off with the second row, what I really like about the seating here is these seats are incredibly comfortable. Very soft seats, tons of thigh support here. Honestly, they're a little bit more comfortable than even the first row. And let's talk about legroom here with my hairy legs. You can see there's plenty of legroom here. I think Land Rover says about 38 inches, but tons of space here and it's very wide. You could easily fit a third person over here in the middle. And back here, you also have heated and ventilated seats and four zone climate control because this is the first edition. So passenger and driver side have their own own set of controls for the climate and just a very you know reassuring captain's chair type of feel you're a little bit higher than the first row and so you kind of have this commanding view of this beautiful dashboard and everything going on around you and then above you you do have the big panoramic sunroof which looks really nice and now the third row is what surprised me because typically you know, three row crossovers like this that aren't in the full size segment aren't very comfortable in the third row, but this one surprisingly is pretty comfortable. Now the angle of the seat isn't too high up where your knees are touching your chest. Uh, you kind of have a normal seating position. You do have soft touch padding over here, which is not something I find on a lot of three row crossovers. You even got heated seats in the third row, a little net for you to store your you know belongings so that they don't bounce around. You've got rear climate control vents over here as well, which are controlled by by the same stack in the middle. And then in terms of legroom, it's not bad either. I mean, this seat is in its most far back position. I still have about an inch of space in my knees. And as you can see, it's not bent too high up where my knees are touching my chest. Uh, pretty comfortable spot. Now you can also move this chair a little bit more forward, give you some extra space in the third row. But the fact is you have a big window over here. You can look out, you've got a sunroof right above you. So everything's nice and airy. You don't feel claustrophobic in the third row. Like like you typically do in a lot of three row crossovers. So very impressed with the third row seating in the Defender 130. Now for the last feature on the interior that I love has to do with this vehicle's ambient lighting. Now, when you get into your settings menu, there is a button called ambient lighting or cabin lighting. And opening this up, you can adjust through 10 different colors and various different brightness levels. And what I like is, you know, you don't have a million different colors to cycle through where the majority of them look very similar. There's just 10 colors, but they're all different and they have a nice touch on the interior. I'm gonna throw up some footage right now of this vehicle at night so you can see exactly what that looks like. I mean, there's lighting in front of the Defender badge on the passenger side. There's lighting on the driver's side behind the infotainment screen. Uh, it's just
just a really nice subtle touch to the interior that brightens up the cabin and you even have it in the second row for the second row passengers to enjoy that lighting as well but I do like that they include that because I'm a sucker for some nice lighting inside of some vehicles now the next feature I love about the Defender really has to do with this powertrain now this is the mid-range powertrain it's called the p400 engine and it's really solid you're looking at a three liter turbocharged inline six that produces about 395 horsepower and 406 pound-feet of torque this thing is a mild hybrid system and as a result of that this thing will actually move this 5600 or so pounds zero to 60 in about 6.3 seconds which is really quick for a vehicle of this size uh, its fuel efficiency isn't bad either you're looking at 17 in the city 21 on the highway I've averaged in the you know mid 18s to high 18s but I have idled this quite a bit because I've been reviewing this vehicle so uh, a really decent powertrain and behind the wheel this thing is pretty quick uh, now passing power on the freeway is where it kind of lacks a little bit because it does take it a little bit of time to go from like 70 to 80 miles an hour but from 0 to 60 this thing hauls and I was really impressed with how quick this engine is now if this engine isn't enough for you Land Rover does offer their supercharged V8 which is going to definitely guzzle a little bit more gas but going to give you a little bit more acceleration down the road and it's going to sound really good now the seventh and last feature I love about this car has to do with its air suspension and just how quick it is now I've experienced air suspension in a variety of different cars but this one has got to be the quickest with just the push of a button in, in a matter of seconds this thing will raise and lower the height of the vehicle which is perfect for off-roading or if you you know get stuck in a rut and you want to raise this up very quickly you don't have to you know be in the perfect condition you don't have to wait 10 minutes for this thing to raise its suspension it does it with the snap of a finger all right now that we've discussed these seven things that I love about the Defender 130 let's talk about five things that I think could be a little bit better or things maybe you should consider if you're looking at purchasing one of these vehicles first I have to address the elephant in the room and that has to do with the length of this vehicle now of course this is the 130 which is the longer or the longest version of the Defender because this has a functional third row but because of that a lot of people mention that this just seems a little bit awkward and long in the rear end I mean that rear quarter panel is just a pretty large space especially because you have a flat back um, giving it a more boxier shape than your, your traditional crossover that has an extended rear end now I will say in person it's not as noticeable or maybe not as bad as in video but you know my friends and family that have seen this car they instantly notice that this just looks extremely large almost like a school bus I personally have grown used to it but it is something that as you first take a look at it it does take uh, you know a second look because it does look a little bit awkward I think the proportions of the 110 which is the shorter version are a little bit more appropriate this does look like it's just kind of slapped on there because they technically had to to be able to accommodate the third row of seating because the wheelbase of this vehicle is exactly the same as the 110 so if they were to extend this out a little bit longer I think it would look more proportional but that would take more in development costs and make this vehicle more expensive than it is the next feature that I wish was a little bit better was the entrance into the third row now even though the third row seats are amazing which is something I mentioned in the things I love the entrance into the third row is a little bit tight now this seat just folds down straight and slides forward unfortunately it doesn't have any type of rocking capability to you know move this seat a little bit more forward and for that reason you don't have a huge entrance into the third row and uh, you know you do have a higher step in height because the third row also has a captain's chair type of setup so it's a little bit higher and as a result of that you have to step into here then onto here which is probably about six inches of space and put your foot in to be able to enter into the third row now if you do manage to climb or squeeze your way back here one thing I will mention is even though I love the amount of leg room it is a little bit compromised because of this wheel well now that again has to do with the fact that this shares the same wheelbase as the 110 and so instead of typical three row crossovers where you're kind of sitting on top of the wheel well uh, with the third row seats this one the wheel well protrudes into the foot room of the third row and so as a result of that you know even though you have good a leg room your feet are kind of smashed together over here because you're losing about six inches of third row space uh, as a result of this wheel well and so if you have three people sitting across over here it's going to be pretty tight my recommendation is 
at max fit two people back here. That way you can share the foot room in the center uh, and that way you're not as tight back here. Now, one of the downsides to having this third row be more comfortable than your typical crossover and have a little bit less of an angle when you're sitting back there uh, is the fact that this does not have a flat loading floor. So let me fold these third row seats down, which I do like they fold down independently. As you can see here, there is a pretty big lip over here because this is a captain's chair setup for the third row. And then once you get over that, you have quite a bit of an angle and then it falls back down for the second row and then goes up again. So it's kind of a zigzag type of shape back here. And as a result of that, it's gonna be harder to lay something completely flat in the back. This isn't like a truck bed type of setup when you fold down the third row. And so even though you can still fit really long objects, it's not a flat loading floor and that is one disadvantage that I wish was a little bit better you know, if you're trying to use your Defender as an overlander gig, which is kind of one of its main big advantages, uh, you can't really do that necessarily with the way these seats fall down because, you know, you're not going to be able to fit a mattress over here and then have it over here. It's just going to be kind of an awkward setup. Now, the next feature I dislike about this vehicle is the fact that this is a first edition $92,000 Defender 130, and I didn't find any type of household power outlet or USB ports in the second and third row. So back here in the second row you do have these blank switches but there's nothing to open up to have a household power outlet uh, same with the third row even though i believe the press content says that there is usb ports back here there's heated seats there's a cup holder but i don't see any type of usb ports in the third row and that's disappointing because even if they offer that as an option this being the first edition model you would think this would come with all the bells and whistles and being a family crossover you kind of need household power outlets that's something I even have in my Ford Bronco, but something that's missing inside the Defender. Now, fortunately, you do have two USB ports and a cigarette style outlet over here in the first row, and then you do have a cigarette style outlet in the trunk, but nothing in the second or third row. Now, for the last thing I dislike about the Defender is the lack of a specific safety feature. So as you can see here, this vehicle does have uh, adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitoring, uh, lane keep assist, but this doesn't have any type of lane centering technology. And that's something that's been introduced in a lot of luxury, even non-luxury vehicles like the Kia Telluride I recently reviewed. But what this vehicle will do is if you're on the freeway and you're merging across a lane without having your turn signal on this will you know kind of push you or nudge you back into the middle of the lane but it won't keep you centered on the highway this doesn't have any type of you know holding on to the steering wheel and this thing will essentially monitor the lanes on the freeway and the curves and steer this vehicle down the road now it's not a very vital feature by any means but for those people who want to take this car on longer road trips uh, that is a nice feature to have especially because other vehicles in the same price point we're talking about ninety two thousand dollars for this one do come with that as a standard feature. Some of the competition will even allow you to change lanes on the freeway, and this unfortunately doesn't have that type of functionality. And so I think in order for Land Rover to better compete and to be more luxurious, you should have that type of lane centering technology to be able to guide you down the freeway if you're taking this on a road trip. Well, there you have it, folks. That was seven things I love and five things I kind of don't about the Land Rover Defender. And I'll be honest, coming up with the list of things I don't like about this car, you may notice some of those are a little nitpicky and that's just because this car does a lot of things well. There are things that can be improved just like any vehicle, but for the most part, this is a pretty solid car. It's very fun to drive. I've talked about that in my full car review. And if you guys are in the market for one of these, you're gonna be impressed. But if you are the owner of a Defender 110 or 130, let me know what your list of likes and dislikes are down in the comments below so the future owners can be better informed if they're looking at purchasing one of these vehicles. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for all of the weekly videos. Also check me out on all the social media at Shwayze underscore. Until next time, everybody, I hope you stay Shwayze, stay healthy, have a wonderful day.